uh, I want to, uh, the Lord have laid another thing on my heart and I want to share with you, man, it, it is something that is uh, really uh, the challenge of many people and that is um, the difference between dating and courtship. Majority of the time we use dating and courtship uh, interchangeably. But there are two, they are two distinctive entities. Dating is different from a courtship. Um, like I was saying previously, uh, who you marry is the most important. No, next to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, who you marry is the most important thing. That is next to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, who you marry is very very important uh, but we have a process like solomon said something in the book of uh, ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3 uh, is a very powerful scripture very very powerful solomon said that there is time he said that there is time is it there is time for everything uh, let me read the king james he says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. So the Lord has strategically programmed, you know, time and season for everything under the sun. And if you want to be successful, like the Bible said that the sons of Issachar, who were men that would have understanding in the times and in the seasons and know what Israel ought to do at any particular point in time because of that, all their brethren were at their command. If you are somebody who understands the times and the seasons, uh, you are going to do well in life. Now, let, let me explain the difference between um, uh, courtship and dating. Now, dating, is, um, dating comes before courtship. Dating precedes courtship. It's like mock exams and exams. Now, uh, mock exams is not the main exams. The mock exams is to test your aptitude, is to test your ability. So dating is now when you are ready to marry, because you have to be very, you have to be very particular about this. When you are not matured enough for for relationship, you don't enter into a relationship. How do you know you are matured enough for relationship? It's not your chron chronological age. Majority of the time, it has to do with your intellectual strength, your mental strength, your emotional strength, your spiritual strength, and then your social status. I don't believe that if you are in SHS, if you are in SHS, you have no business entering into a relationship. And me, I personally even believe, I personally even believe that even those at the university, it is the earliest you can even enter into a relationship is level 400. Because it, now in our system, you have, a long, you have a long way to go. Even after graduation, after your national service, if God will help you to marry, you will need like three years before you marry. So people who are in level 100, level 200, level 300, who are in a relationship, most of the times it, it looks some way to me because like I've been saying, the moment you enter into a relationship, you have exposed yourself to the danger of fornication. So now dating is simply when you know that you are matured enough to enter into a relationship. And then you've gone somewhere or even in your church, you have seen a sister. You have seen a sister that you think that, oh, this sister is very intelligent. She has character. She's good. What you have to do is not to open. Dating is not you've opened your mouth to propose, but then you make the person your friend. Get closer to the sister and invite her out. Invite her to programs. Be close. Be calling her. Be WhatsApping her. Take her to dinner. Take her to restaurant. You know, you can take her to a nice place somewhere and go and talk. And then you are doing all these things to access her. Because, you know, you cannot marry somebody without a strong character you have to access it so once you are accessing her then you are praying you, you see you don't make the mistake of proposing before assess the person analyze the person don't be overwhelmed by the person's physicality don't be overwhelmed by the person's eloquence don't be overwhelmed by the person's pocritude 
because you see it takes a strong formidable character for marriage to work it's not eloquence brofo enye nyansa obu ote brofo na na no ya wiran wiran so so se bi so na dwi na dwi mo ha wo wara na obe bre there are some people they are very they are, you know they are very eloquent have good grammar but there's a distinction between wisdom and grammar there's a distinction between critical thinking and grammar so your grammar and many parkos wanka gana ki any problem because most of our leaders have how to speak good english but how to apply and translate what they are speaking into their practical and pragmatic life is the problem yes there's a distinction between uh, speaking good english and then translating what is in your head into your practical life so you don't have to be mesmerized right you don't have to be mesmerized and you don't have to be blinded by the physical appearance of the person. Just take your time. Steady the person. So that is dating. You are you are studying the person. You are looking at the person. Like, you know, when Adam, Adam, Adam saw the woman and he said, Now this is the bone of my bone and flesh. So he looked, he looked before saying something. Relax, like what Jacob did, you know. Jacob worked for seven years for Rachel. And then in the night, listen, in the night, they tricked him and brought him Leah. But can you imagine? He didn't see it till the morning. So the night stand for ignorant. The night stand for Majority of the time, when you are not mature, the way you think is different. Your interest is different. Your desire is different. But the more you grow, the way you think changes. You see, so, so Jacob, the reason why he went for the wrong person, the reason why he, he mistook uh, uh, Rachel for Leah, uh, Leah for Rachel, was the fact that it was in darkness, ignorant. Ignorant. And number two, the reason was that he was in a hurry. Because, you see, even if in those days there were, there were no light and the, the women covered themselves, listen to me. When you go to honeymoon, you are in a room with a woman, and before you make love, master, you will talk. And when you talk, so far as uh, Joseph and uh, Jacob have been in the same house with these girls for seven years, he, he will be able to discern the voice of, you know, he will be able to de de descend and dichotomize the voice of Leah from that of Rachel. So why didn't he? See, why didn't he see? He was in a hurry. A pentamina that sex, you know, your hunger for sex can let you choose the wrong person. A lot of people, you see, like we, 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 we quickly want to enter into a romantic relationship. Then you have seen somebody because of the person's curves and because the person is so charming, so captivating that we just want to propose. No, no. If you are proposing to somebody because of how charming the person is, how, you know, curvy the person, you are, you are not thinking. You are, you are behaving like a child. A young kola and a because you realize that when you marry, it is not, a, when you marry, it is not the curves. It's not the the, 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 the the eloquence. It's not the porcritude. It is not, you know, the way the lady is uh, well-structured and fabricated by God or, or crafted by God. And you know, never You understand what I'm saying? Because when you marry, you need a, a woman who is tough in the mind, tough emotionally, a woman who is creative, who is innovative. Even if the woman doesn't have a job when you put money in her hands she can do something with, with, with her hands you see so because of this you just have to take your time the reason why when you're going to choose a life partner you know men when you're going to choose a life partner you have to be very careful is the fact that it's because of the way most african women are trained most of african most african women are trained to depend on men and that is a very bad training, very bad orientation. And we have to reverse that orientation. A woman does not need a man to eat, does not need a man to buy a car, does not need a man to survive. No. And we have to, you see, we have to disabuse their mind from this. So because of that, most of the women are lazy. Most of the women are not tenacious. They, 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 they are not strong. They, they don't stretch themselves because they think that, oh, I will get a man to, to, to hold my back. 
eh, a man to be there for me, to help me, a man to take care of me. A woman is not created for a man to take care of you. You are created to be a partner. Pa partner means that the man is doing his bit. You are also doing your bit to push them, the family forward. Part partner, it means that the two of you comes together for, 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 you know, for things to work. So dating is that you are taking your time to study the person using your mind, consulting friends, consulting spiritual fathers, introducing the person to your mature friends, to your spiritual father, to analyze the person. You've not said anything. Not, I love you, I miss you. No, don't, don't be intoxicated with those things. And take your time and pray. So now when you, you have analyzed the person and then you are convinced, convinced by yourself and then by what your friends, mature friends are saying, and they have to give you logical reason why you should marry just this lady in this age. Ali, gay, gay, your chill, color with your fresh. No, but they have to give you logical reason that this girl is, is patient. This girl is humble. Apart from that, this girl is innovative. This girl doesn't want to live. Doesn't want to live to impress anybody. And this girl is productive. And this girl is respectful. That that is what should convince you. So. When, when you, you, you get this analysis from your spiritual fathers or your friends, then you have to also listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You see, whoever is your wife, like Paul, Paul said something, he said that the peace of God that surpass all knowledge, it surpasses, like, so it's like the way you are feeling for, in your spirit or in your heart is not predicated or it doesn't base on her physical appearance even though she has form she has shape even though um uh, how do you call it she's the color you 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 want but your decision you realize that what you are feeling within is not based on her physicality but you have this peace a peace that go beyond goes beyond human logic human an analysis you have this peace within you. You have this conviction. Anytime you think about marrying her, it's like you feel so much peace. You feel so comfort. Anytime you are with her and then you are talking, you can sense intellectual compatibility. Intellectual compatibility and mental compatibility means you, you, you think along the same lines. That the person is able to reason with you. The person is a deep thinker. That the person is a visionary. He's able, I mean, he com she complements your vision. So it is when you are convicted, then you tell her. So when you tell her also to pray about, don't force her, don't force love out of the heart of anybody. It is bad to do that. Bad. So like I'm saying, be convicted before you tell the person. When you tell the person, let the person, give the person time. Don't, don't pressure the person. Just, just be friends, be nice. Be nice. Talk to her, encourage her, be there for her. Don't force anybody, don't do anything to impress anyone to marry you. Just be nice, just be yourself. If you want to get a good marriage, if you want to win the heart of an individual, what you have to do is to be yourself. Don't impress her. Be yourself. Don't exaggerate. Don't get over the top. Don't, don't, don't say things you don't know. If someone loves you, if someone loves you, and then the marriage is ordained by God, you, you wouldn't have to do anything to impress the person. Because you might not have money today, but if you have a vision, you are rich. Any woman that is a matured woman, any woman that is a smart woman, will not look at now, he will, she will look into your future. Smart women, matured women, Eagle women look into the future. They know that even though the man doesn't have anything now, but this man have a future. When, 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 you know, I, I, I tell people that about 10 years ago or, or 15 years ago, if I've, I've proposed to some of the sisters, like they will even insult me. But you have to open your spiritual eye and also use your mind to analyze the person to know that the way he talks, the way he approaches things, the way he thinks, his hard working, his creativity, his ingenuity tells you that he has a future. There are some people that have some things in their hands now. Maybe it was well to them by their appearance. Even though they have things in their hands now, but give them, but give them 20 years, they will lose it. So, um, I mean, don't force, in, don't force anyone. Relax for her. If you, are, you have, If you have told her, relax for her also to pray. Pray about it and still be nice. 
So if she prays about this and then she feels that you are not a person, then you just become friends. Don't 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 force don't force it because God doesn't have a daughter. God have daughters. That are, you see, don't stoop low. There are a lot of women God is raising. God is building you. Have some to marry. Carry yourself well. God will give you a good woman. If this one turn her back on you and look down on you and 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 rubbish you, the Lord. What you have to do is just. Keep yourself. The Lord will bring you another woman. The Lord will bring you another person. But if she and, uh, uh, accepts you, then that is, she accepts you. That is where the courtship begins. So courtship begins when you are convicted by the Holy Spirit. I repeat again, don't propose to anyone if you are not convicted by the Holy Spirit in your heart and you, have not re and you are not even sure you are going to marry the person because if you don't take care, you lose your integrity, you propose to this one, break the relationship, then propose to another one, break. no, it's not the best. It's something, it's a luxury you can't afford. It's a great luxury, luxury you, can't, you can't really afford. So, that is the distinction between dating and courtship. Dating is when you are studying the person, praying about, about the person, and you want to receive a confirmation from your friends and matured individuals. I want to receive a conviction from the Holy Spirit before you propose. So that is dating. You are just assessing the person without seeing it. And courtship is when you have said it. The Holy Spirit, have you have the confirmation from your friends. And then the Holy Spirit have also convicted you that the person is the right person. And then you propose to the person. The person also prays about it and he receives confirmation from friends and mature people and con conviction from the Holy Spirit. And then you start, you know, a romantic relationship. That is what you call courtship. But you see, uh, sisters, it is not the best to answer somebody's proposal if you have not heard from god no don't do that some people are in a relationship and they said we are still praying about it uh, it's funny you see accepting somebody's proposal without hearing from god is like crossing the highway with your eyes closed a car will run into you so before you accept a man's proposal make sure you have heard from god and that is you see these are the times you have to really wait upon the Lord. Take your time, pray. Some of you have to check check into maybe a retreat center somewhere and invest. And if you are working and you will not have that time, use Saturdays or use the night. Pray because it is your life and your children's life. So take your time, work on it and pray. And let me come back again. Brothers, if you see somebody you think she's beautiful, you you like her, and all that, like I'm, like I said, don't propose to her. Date her. Dating is not proposing. When you date her, analyze her, look at her, and pray about her. If at a point you are not convicted, if at a point you are not convicted by the Holy Spirit, then the person remains your friend. Say propose She remains your good friend. But so catch you feel deep down in your spirit that the person is not the right person. Break Charlie. Breaking of relationship is not easy. And I believe that we Christians eh, are not supposed to make these mistakes because the Holy Spirit is in us. Sanke you bet three about mistakes be one key yet. Because the Bible said that he will hear a voice behind you that this is the way you walk in it. You hear a voice. The Lord God himself will speak to you if, if you take it. Because the Holy Spirit is closer to us than even our cloths. The moment you become, born, you become born again, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And the more you pray, you fast, you read the word, the Holy Spirit, the unction on you increase. And you are able to hear his voice if you take your time, if you wait. He said that the Lord is my shepherd. You know, most of us, we don't allow God to be our shepherd. We are not sheep for God. We are not sheep. It's like we are goats. A sheep is a sheep have a shepherd. Want to take his time, relax, listen to my shepherd. But most of us, God is not our shepherd. If we, we say it out of um, we say it just like that. But He's not our shepherd. And you see, the reason I said God is not our shepherd is that we make a decision without taking time to consult God. That, that's it. If God is your shepherd, before you make a decision, you will take your time to consult Him because He's your boss. 
And he said that if he, you make him your shepherd, you will not want to. If you take your time, pray, relax, listen to him, you will never get into trouble. Because he said that he will lead me beside still waters, not trouble waters. One day I went to preach in a church somewhere. And I was talking about purity, why, uh, why uh, how sisters should keep themselves and live for God and God will glorify them. After I was done, a, a lady came to me, she was like 47 or something, getting to 50. And she was crying and she said all the things I said. Now she doesn't believe them anymore because she kept her virginity till the age of 32 before marrying. She married as a virgin and I've married for 40 years. The marriage is not working now. The husband have left her and she's left with two kids and she have to work to take care of the kids. And the Lord told me that I should ask her this question. But then the question was too late to ask her. The Lord said even though she kept herself, but she did she took time or she took her time? Did she take her time? You know, we, we, most of us don't take time. We don't have time. Invest time. Did she take time to wait and listen to my voice before entering into the re relationship? Like Mary, I like Naomi and 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 Naomi and her, her husband Elimelech. Elimelech means God is my king. And the Bible said that. No, when, when, when you read the, the the book of Ruth, it's it's a very fair, fair, the first chapter. It's it's a, it's a very interesting scripture. The, the man of God. It is believed that Samuel wrote the book of Luke, uh, Ruth. Now, it's it's a very in interesting scripture. Very very interesting. Especially the the, the 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 first one, the first chapter. Look, and I want to. Uh, do a little exegesis on that. I say, it said that it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was famine in the land. There was famine in the land. Famine means, you see, deprivation, losing certain you are under pressure. What you are expecting, you are not getting it. If you don't take care, because you are not getting what you are expecting, because you are aging, you make a decision you are not supposed to make. So that is why when you are under pressure, when people are just talking into your ears, society are pressuring, uh, pressuring you. The psychology that goes with it is not good at all. You can go through psychological debilitation and a whole lot of stuff. But in the midst of this perplexity and anxiety, you must take time to, to, to hear God. T take time. There was famine. And he said that there was a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem is the house of bread. So even though this house of bread, but there was famine in the house of bread. He said that he, he went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He, his wife, and two sons. And the name of the man is Elimelech. And the wife's name is Naomi. He's from Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem means house of bread. Judah means praise. So it means that the Lord will give you bread and then you, 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 whilst you are eating the bread, you will not eat it with sorrow. You eat it with, with praise, with laughter in your mouth. Obi or why there are some people, you know, if you don't take care, there are some people, if you don't take care because of a little pressure, you do what you are not supposed to do. A lot of Christian ladies, because things are delaying, I mean, she make a rash decision and later fall into trouble because my friends are marrying, because I'm aging, and, and, and they say I should give But If you don't take care, you will marry the wrong person and pay dearly for it. Because if you marry the wrong person, you will suffer. Because where God have not sent you, he will not follow you over there. So, Eli Malik, then his day be excuse me, his name means God is my king. If God is my king, then I have to listen to him. But because of pressure, he didn't listen to God and went to Moab. And the wife's name means Naomi, which is which means sweetness. When they went to, when they went to Moab, Elimelech died, and the two of his children also died. So Naomi was left alone. And then ten years he heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel. There are, there are some people, eh? Because of pressure, they will take some decisions and later the Lord will open a door they can't open. They, they, they can't enter. 
so when it, Naomi heard that the Lord had visited Israel and given them bread, and then when he was coming, and then the people saw him, uh, her, and then they call they called her Naomi. He said, "Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara." Bitterness. It means if you don't listen to God, you, you may be a very sweet lady, but you will enter into a relationship that will turn your whole life upside down. A lot of you see, a lot of women were very beautiful. Were, 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 were spanky. What I mean by spanky is that they, 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 they were excited, you know. They were, but have married into depression. Married. If you don't take it, you will marry into depression. If you don't listen to God, if you don't take your time, you will marry into depression. You will marry into trouble. A lot of people have married and they are not happy. Don't rush into it. No matter how things are delaying. No matter what things are, no matter what society is saying, don't if if you don't take it, you lose your brightness. You you, you lose your, your your star. So Naomi is it, it, called sweetness, but because she went to Moab, she returned as Mara. And then when the people saw her and they said Naomi, he said, "Don't call me Naomi." He said, verse twenty. She said, "Don't call." She said to them, "Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara." For the Almighty had dealt bitterly with me. Blaming God for the negative, negative decision she made. And that's what a lot of Christians do. We make decisions without hearing from God and then fall into trouble and start blaming God. A lot of Christians, their problems is self-imposed. Because most of us, you see, if you hear, you listen to God, right? If you listen to God, you will avoid a lot of troubles, you are, a lot of the troubles that will come your way. No, she's blaming God. People are married, say, Radin, I didn't know God, why? God, why? God, why me? They didn't take their time. Take your time. Societal pressure, family pressure. Please, take your time. I was saying the other day, say, we as one nama, fa, 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 bidi bo anymore. Means that don't, don't listen to what people are saying. You don't have to listen to what people are saying. Don't listen to what people are saying. Don't listen to what people are doing. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't listen to what people are saying. Listen to God. It's better to listen to God. Naomi was blaming God. He said, I went out full. And the Lord have brought me home empty. Why then call ye me Naomi? Seeing that the Lord have testified against me and the Almighty had afflicted me. Hey, Naomi. That's what a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians are crying. Oh Lord, why? Lord, why? But yet, they didn't take time. So now, Take your time, sister. Take your time. Listen to God. Some people even in, in their relationship, the way they are crying and all that, but yet they won't break their relationship. Take your time. And if you take your time, God will let you laugh. Take your time. Relax. Some of you, I know you are going through pain. You are going through pressure, family pressure, societal pressure. But take your time. If you take your time, you win. May the Lord bless you. My number is 0242 I'm Justice the Graph to Bafos. You can send me WhatsApp, especially WhatsApp. I'm very good in the WhatsApp. You can send me WhatsApp because majority of the time you might call me and not get me. But if you send me through WhatsApp, you are going to get me. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you. If you have a problem too, you can inbox me. And by the wisdom of God, by the intelligence of God, I'm going to help you. And those with spiritual marriage, if you know you have spiritual marriage, there's something very awful. It can disorganize your life, do a lot of, you know, a lot of things to you. Inbox me and let me, let's meet so we can, we can pray with you. May the Lord bless you. May he favor you. May he elevate you. May he exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen.